progesterone, progesterone, progesterone. It's all you read about online, right? When you're trying to conceive. Well, now you can test your progesterone levels at home yourself. So I'm gonna talk about that in this video for you and show you how to do it. Hello lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be talking about the MFB progesterone test. One of the most popular videos on my channel is the one on why I think the day 21 progesterone test is useless. If you want to check it out, I'll make sure to link it in the cards. But the idea is that testing progesterone on day 21 assumes that you have a perfect cycle and that you will have ovulated on day 14 in order for on day 21 your progesterone levels to be high enough. Now, some women will ovulate later or they will ovulate earlier, meaning progesterone levels on day 21 for them will not be what is standard. That could mean that the test results for these women don't actually reflect the fact that they have ovulated and they might get stressed out unnecessarily because their progesterone levels have already dipped or they aren't actually high enough. So my suggestion in that video is that you chart and I still will suggest that. So I will also link in my free fertility charting course that you can check out to start charting yourself. However, we've got another little neat tool and that is the ovulation double check tests by MFB Fertility. Now, these are little dipsticks that look exactly like your pregnancy test or your ovulation prediction test, except they test something else and that's pregnenolol glucuronide. You have no idea how hard I have been practicing to be able to say that without looking at a piece of paper. From now on, I'll be calling it PDG so I won't trip over my words. Now, PDG is a urine metabolite of progesterone. That basically means if there's progesterone in your system, then PDG will show up as well and it will show up in your urine. So when you use these tests, you are not directly testing progesterone, but you are testing the presence of progesterone by PDG. The first half of your cycle, which starts with your period by the way, the hormone estrogen is dominant. So estrogen will go up, 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 and as a result, a little egg, or actually multiple eggs in your ovaries, will start to mature, and then under the influence of estrogen, LH goes up, and that's what we test with ovulation prediction tests, and when LH goes up, your ovaries will release an egg. After the ovaries have released the egg, the corpus luteum stays behind. And what that does is produce progesterone. Now, one of the things progesterone does is prevent your body from having a flow. You can imagine otherwise, if you would ovulate and progesterone wouldn't be there in your body, maybe a few days after ovulation, you would already have your period. And as a result, the little nest for the egg that is fertilized and still needs to travel down the fallopian tube won't actually have a nest to come home to. So progesterone makes sure that your body holds on to the endometrial lining in your uterus so that the egg actually has a place to land and implant. The second half of your cycle is called the luteal phase and that should ideally be about 14 days. So when you're trying to conceive, it's very important for you to know if your progesterone levels are high enough and stay high long enough for a possibly fertilized egg to implant and for you to hold on to the pregnancy. So back to this at home progesterone test, the double ovulation checker. The threshold for your progesterone to be high enough to hold on to a pregnancy is that seven days after ovulation, so this would be your day 21 blood test, that progesterone should be at least 10 nanograms per milliliter. 10 is the minimum you need to be able to hold on to a pregnancy. If you have blood test results and it shows anything between three and 10 nanograms per milliliter after you've ovulated, then at least you know that you have ovulated. But if at seven days past ovulation, it's not above 10, then you already know that progesterone isn't high enough. So back to this at home urine test, which doesn't test progesterone itself, but the urine metabolite, which is the PDG. Now the levels of that is a little bit different, but the 10 nanograms per milliliter in your blood correlates with five micrograms per milliliter of PDG in your urine. Are you still following this? <laughs> this means that seven days past ovulation in your urine, you should have PDG of at least five micrograms per milliliter. And that is exactly what this test tests because the test is made in a way that it shows up 
positive when you have passed the threshold of the five micrograms. Oh boy, I really hope you guys are following this. I might not be explaining this very well. Anyway, now that I've explained the science to you a little bit, let's talk about how you actually use the test. So the tests come in a little patch like this, basically the same as your LH tests. And when you open it up, you will find exactly a strip as you would with a LH test or a pregnancy test. See, it looks just like that. And MFB gives you the instructions that you can start testing four to six days after you had a positive ovulation test. So that's your predictor. So that means if you are charting, as I explained in my fertility charting course, the day that you found your ovulation, you can start using these tests three to five days after that. So all you do is you catch a little bit of urine as you do with all the other tests and then you stick in the test just like this and I usually do it about 10 seconds. Now here's where the difference comes in with a LH or HCG test, the pregnancy test, because if there is no progesterone in your system or no PDG in your urine, then you will actually get two lines. And that looks exactly like this. And you can see on this overview of my own cycle that I started testing for LH on cycle day 11. And you see that there is barely a second line showing that there is LH in the system. But on cycle day 12, you see I have two lines. So LH is going up, ovulation is nearing. So then on cycle day 13, I decided to do a progesterone test because I assumed that would be the day my LH would peak. So I hadn't ovulated yet then. And that indeed showed to be the case because I have two lines showing that there's no PDG detected in the urine. But when I tested for LH later that day, that showed positive, so I knew I would ovulate the next day. And I will put in a clip as well of my chart that corresponds with these tests. And then you can see that indeed I ovulated on cycle day 14. So since I ovulated on cycle day 14, I knew I could start testing on cycle day 17, which was three days past ovulation or three DPO. So I did that. And there you see that on cycle day 17, the test is still positive because there is still a second line or actually negative, I need to say, negative for PDG so because there is a second line. So I tested again on cycle day 18 and voila, no second line. So that means on that day, the PDG in the urine was higher than five micrograms per milliliter, which means that progesterone in my system was higher than 10 nanograms per milliliter. And that supports the fact that I indeed ovulated and progesterone was high enough for me to be able to sustain a pregnancy in that cycle. Now there are a couple of things I wanna share with you that uh, is shared on the insert of these tests of MFB because I think they're quite valuable for you to know. And that is that they say that the threshold of that five micrograms per milliliter in the urine, so the level you need to be able to, able to hold into a pregnancy, is going to be roughly between four days past ovulation and uh, 10 days past ovulation, sorry, I need to reinterpret it because they have put it in relation to LH and we're talking about from ovulation because we know how to chart. So if you are testing before that, then you can expect the test to be negative and you test after that, then you can also expect the test to be negative. However, if you're pregnant, then you will also see these tests to be positive one or two days before your expected period because progesterone will stay the same level. Um, but that is the time to also start testing for pregnancy, of course, so you wanna do a pregnancy test then too. So another thing that is quite important for me to share with you is that MFB shares in their insert that in their studies, five to 7% of the women did not metabolize PDG from progesterone high enough for that to show up in the tests. Now in their case, it did not reflect at all their progesterone levels. So if your tests show up positive, then this is a confirmation for you that your progesterone levels are high enough. But if you're not getting the results that you would expect, that doesn't necessarily mean that your progesterone isn't high enough. This should, however, be an alert to you. And then you can use that information to go and get progesterone tested 
through blood tests. Especially if you're charting as well, you will have your progesterone test results, your LH test results, and your chart with your temperatures, and then you can take that to your doctor and say, please, could you test my progesterone levels by drawing blood? This is usually when I ovulate, plus seven days, can we make an appointment for then? I just wanted to mention as well that this video is not sponsored. I purchased these tests because I really wanted to test them for you so that I can give you some extra information on whether you should be ordering these tests, yes or no, if it's worthwhile to you. So in conclusion, I'm super enthusiastic about these tests. I really think they complement charting really well. If you're concerned about progesterone levels, you have difficulty maybe interpreting your chart and your temperatures, maybe you struggle with adrenal fatigue, maybe you're up frequently at night because you already have a little one or you have a strange work schedule then these progesterone tests can really be super helpful for you to identify whether your levels are good enough or not and they can also give you information on whether you need to be requesting some blood tests so let me know in the comments, have you already tried these tests? What did you think? Have you not tried them yet and are you excited to go and get them? I would love to hear from you. And if you have any requests for future videos, please don't hesitate and let me know as well because I make these videos for you. So like this video if you did like it, subscribe if you haven't yet so that you can be notified next time I upload new content, which is every Thursday. And then in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.